This is the first time that somebody made a video game um, where we really get into the head of one of the main characters of the books. Didelic, since it was founded 15 years ago, uh, has always um, specialized on storytelling games. And so we had a lot of experience with characters that were a little bit in stories that were a little bit out of the box. And what we wanted to do with Gollum as well is to add a story in the Tolkien universe and make this a narrative driven game. Look at me. They brought you to him, didn't they? The Dark Lord. What did you tell him? What did you tell Sauron? Before we started with the, with the writing process, we did, of course, a lot of research. We read the books, we watched the movies and read Tolkien's notes that he left about the story and about his writing process and his letters and all we could get our hands on, basically. When we started, I fancied myself a Tolkien expert, but I quickly learned that there was just so much that I didn't know. We're working together with another Tolkien expert as well, who's, who's been studying this for his whole life, basically. And I was surprised how much there's still to learn about, about the story. I think the main focus for Gollum was the story which is the main thing that keeps you playing, which, because we, we tell a story that wasn't told before. The backstory of Gollum is in a lot of ways still a mystery. So there are many open questions and many things that Tolkien himself didn't answer. So we had to fill in the gaps and uh, really try to interpret those notes and integrate them into our story and make sure that we are in line with what Tolkien wrote, but still add our own version. So it was quite fun to find out what happens. So it's our Tolkien himself kind of uh, saw himself. He saw himself as a historian who finds out what happened in the past in, in, in that world that he created. So that's kind of what we did as well. So we start the game about eight years before uh, the War of the Rings starts, parallel to the, to the first half of the Fellowship of the Ring, when Frodo is still in the Shire and, and basically doesn't know about anything. My favorite part of like in the development process when it comes to art is showing places that we've never seen before. It's like, for example, the inside of Sauron's Tower, like the inside of Bar Baradur. The first half of the game is basically taking place there and really finding a visual style for this gigantic hive of creatures, like how they are living there and how they are like working there, ruled by fear and all the time death everywhere. That was the most fun part. <laughs> we expanded the lore a bit with a few new characters. For example, we are showing evil humans a lot, like humans that are working as spies for Sauron or even like working in the tower next to the orcs and next to the all the other monstrosities. We're even showing a character that grew up inside the Dark Tower. I'm sure for whoever is looking to hear more about characters that look very interesting on the surface, but didn't get that much space into the official lore already created, we'll find some new content to fill in those gaps to justify the character existence into the story. In the end, we do all of this for the fans and, and we, want to, we want to make them happy. We want to make us happy, of course, and hope that uh, the fans like it as well. That's what we do this for. <laughs>